welcome to my show, The Woman's Connection, and I'm your host, Jerry Louise Switson. Today, we're going to talk about real estate, past, present, and future. And with me are three highly successful women that are going to talk about their experiences. I would like to introduce Joan Gurner, Wendy Rowden, and Kate Coburn. And welcome, ladies. Why don't we start talking about where you are today, and then we can go backwards after a bit. You want to start, Joan? Certainly. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm a vice president at Lair McGovern Bovis. Um, my firm is a construction management firm, and I founded a preservation division at Lair McGovern. Um, we do, we're, we're working on Grand Central Terminal right now, the Women's Memorial, and a number of other preservation projects some undertakings you've got there. It is. Well, let's go back a minute. I understand you were one of the few women project managers. Before I continue the question, what is a project manager? Um, a project manager is a person that runs, it, that it runs a construction project, and uh, that person is usually the senior construction person on the site. It was a very interesting experience. <laughs> and in the 70s, that was like, quite unheard of? You were like breaking ground at that point? Yes, I think there were just a few of us at that time. What was the field like breaking the barriers? Um, I think that the, it, it was a little more difficult then, I'm sure, than it is today. And um, the thing that was most interesting is that you, you really just, the whole issue is getting the job done. And um, I would find myself first being intimidated by what was going on on the site and then started focusing on the issues and, and the final goal of building a building. And then everything became very easy and you just roll up your sleeves and get the job done. How did you feel? Were you nervous, excited? I was nervous and excited, and, but the most wonderful part of it was walking away from a building, actually starting it from the ground up, putting in the last doorknob and then walking away and feeling that this, this building is now a part of the New York skyline. And How exciting. It, it was. Now you also, years later, well this is presently, right now you're involved, you said, in the Women's Memorial in Arlington National Park. Cemetery, Cemetery yes. in D.C. Now how did you get involved in that? Um, the Women's Memorial is dedicated to all the women in the military, 1.8 million, that um, from the Revolutionary War through present day. And it was the vision of one woman who is a Brigadier General in the Air Force, General Wilma Vaught. Uh, I met her and started um, talking with her about how she was going to build her project. Uh, it was conceived, designed, and built by women with the help of many men also. I <laughs> want to make that clear. Uh, it, and it was, um, it was just a, it's a wonderful project. It's a museum now, and it's a, it's a national monument. Now, can anybody's name be inscribed in it, or is it close to future names? Um, it's not like the Vietnam Memorial, where there, is, there are inscriptions on a wall. It's an actual museum that you go in and you walk through. Oh. And uh, the part of it that was preservation is that the monument was an existing monument, and we penetrated through the monument uh, that was the monument of the Arlington National Cemetery and built a building behind it so that the nearest grave is 10 feet from the back of the building. How did you feel when you were building that? It was very exciting. Uh, I was the officer in charge of that. We had a full-time woman, Margaret Van Vost, who was on the site as the project manager, and a woman conservator, and of course, a number of other people. That's fabulous. Wendy, you, let's move on to you and you, your law uh, career. You've had a lot of important men as mentors in your life. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, my mentor, the mentors in my career have been very important to me. Um, they've taught me lessons both by specific advice and by example. Um, I think some of the most important things that they've taught me uh, include having a very focused career plan, setting a tangible but aggressive goals for the future, and being willing to um, adjust your goals at, and being aware of 
things that are happening around you so that you are proactive and not just reactive to changes in the economy, changes in an industry. Um, they also taught me the importance of being politically savvy. I think in, <laughs> in, in, in any business context, it's important to have more than one mentor. It, uh, organizations work by consensus in the way in which people uh, uh, succeed is, is by having more than one person champion their cause. I think the, the other lesson that I learned was make yourself indispensable so that it's in your mentor's best interest to promote you. Now, were these mentors above you, or were they um, in they other were, areas they were, that were helping you? They were people, generally, that I worked with who were senior to me, um, but people who were um, not so many years ahead of me that they were not in, in touch with the kinds of challenges that were facing a younger uh, professional entering an industry. So these were gentlemen that were not intimidated by a woman coming up the ranks? No, not at all. Very supportive, in fact. How did, I'm curious, how did you get them as mentors? Did they come to you? Did you seek them out, or it just evolved naturally? They hired me. They hired you. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. Okay. Um, uh, one of them uh, was partner in a firm that I worked at when I was in private practice. I'm currently the general counsel of the Rockefeller Group, which is a major real estate company and the uh, person who hired me uh, some 10 years ago uh, was another one of the mentors in my career. How lovely. Yes. How fortunate for you. I, I do feel privileged. What issues do you uh, believe that are pressing today for a woman who wants to enter the real estate law? Well, I think the legal industry has really become much more of a business over the last 10 to 15 years and I think any buddy, man or woman who wants to succeed in the profession has to be a business getter, a rainmaker. And to get business you have to be able to market yourself. Um, it's not just good enough to be good at what you do. I think you also have to be able to have a, a more personal relationship with your clients, something that's more in the nature of a, a, a personal bond. And that can require um, business entertaining. Um, I think the traditional ways of business entertaining um, over the years have been playing golf or going out to a basketball game. Um, for some women, that's not as appealing. Sometimes also it conflicts with family commitments. Um, so I think women have to be sometimes a little more creative about how they go about doing business entertaining. How did you find your most successful creative business entertainment? Well, for example, something that can be a lot of fun is taking a client to a show. I mean, it doesn't... I, I happen to like sports, but not everybody does. Um, frankly, it also doesn't always have to be at the end of the day. Um, one of the things you find is men frequently um, don't want to be away from their families either. So th they're happy to do something in the middle of the day or earlier in the morning. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I have to remember yeah. that. <laughs> Kate, among the many accomplishments you've had, you were the first woman elected as chairman of Young Men's Real Estate. Association, which I think went into existence in 1948 and has right. since changed its name to Young Men and Women. That's right. How did you feel breaking the ground in that project? And well, I mean that organization. I was extremely excited. I was extremely proud of uh, of my accomplishments because probably five years before I joined as a member, there was a debate as to whether women should become members of the organization to begin with. So here, five years later, there I was elected, and it was a, a popular vote. It wasn't a, a board of directors electing a new president. It was really a popular vote of the membership. But I had worked very hard for that position. Um, I truly believe that when you join an organization, it's not enough to be a member, that you get the most out of an organization, and the organization gets the most out of its members by having people participate. And at the first opportunity when I could volunteer to do something, I was there and I did it. Um, whether it was collecting tickets at the door or running around finding a place for an annual meeting or a special event, I let people know that I was interested and I delivered on all the commitments that I made. I also took a personal interest in the members of the organization. And if it was obviously predominantly men, when we had special events, I met their wives. I found out about their children, and I remembered their wives and remember their children. 
So not only did the men like me, but I think the women as well related to me. And the men were comfortable with me, not only as a professional, but also as a social friend. And they weren't intimidated by you. The women were not intimidated by that's you. That's right. So, and the men weren't either. Because that's so important. I think uh, a lot of people get, I don't know the proper word for it, bent out of shape. They get intimidated. They feel very uncomfortable, don't know how to handle. Well, this is my business associate, and this is my wife, and the wife is not sure or what. It's a great talent you've got. That's right. Well, thank you. You also are more recently, you're an early member of CRU. Mm -hmm. Okay, what does CRU stand for? CRU stands for Commercial Real Estate Women, and the three of us on this show are members of Commercial Real Estate Women. We're a group of about 85 women professionals, mm -hmm. senior members of our organizations that have come together really for networking and mentoring and socialization. Um, we, we are a group of people that really stand ready to support one another, be it personal and professional. What year was this organized? Almost 10 years ago, as a matter of fact, our 10th anniversary is coming up. All right. Um, I'll open it up, the question up to everybody. How do you become a member, since uh, there's only 85 of you? Um, since I'm the president of the organization, <laughs> since I take a key role in membership. Um, membership is by uh, invitation only. Uh, we're looking for women executives who've had at least 10 years of experience in the commercial real estate industry and who hold senior level positions. And we have members from all disciplines in the commercial real estate field, whether it's owners, developers, managers, architects, lawyers, brokers. And we try to even out the number of people in each category so that no one category is weighted with too many people in that segment of the industry. And um, it's, a, it's a wonderful way uh, for women at our level to uh, have it, an opportunity to interact with their peers. I also understand that you do mentoring for real estate schools. Now, you have to forgive my ignorance. I didn't realize that there were real estate schools because I took a real estate course to get my license in college, but I never realized there were schools. I didn't know if there was one here in New York or if there's others close by that you mentor women. Well, I was going to say that I, I think it's really within the last 10 years that real estate has become a profession. Uh -huh. uh, New York University was probably the pioneer in its field offering continuing education classes for people who are obtaining their salesperson's license and their broker's license and then going on to develop a master's of real estate. And subsequently, I believe Columbia University and Baruch University are also offering these courses. And I think it was just a natural evolution that it trickled down to the high school level where people would be introduced to the possibilities of perhaps studying about real estate on a professional level. Do you find that more women or men are entering the real estate field, either commercial or? Judging by my company, which is a commercial brokerage company, Cushman and Wakefield, in our training classes, we have equal numbers of men and women in, in brokerage or um, appraisal. It's 50-50. How do you select your women that you want to mentor? Well, there actually, there are a couple of things. Uh, a few years ago, CRU started, uh, worked on a program with the National Academy of Finance where we helped them to develop and then teach a high school level course on real estate. And that was really a mentoring of young people, not just young women, young men and women. And in fact, one of the young men has had a wonderful success story, which is being documented as part of a video that uh, I think the Department of Education mm -hmm. is, is doing right now, which is. Obviously, may feel, and I think Kate, you helped teach one of the courses. Yes, I did. Yes, I what did. we're looking to do now um, is to set up a program with the local graduate schools to make our members available as mentors to young women who are graduating to help give them some career counseling, some advice, to give them some ideas about um, what are some of the uh, best areas to be looking at, how to go about identifying people, to, and perhaps giving them introductions. So oh, I mentoring, I think, is very important. That uh, whether your mentor is a male or a woman, I think, I think we would all agree that having somebody who is there to give you some clues um, about how how to succeed is very important. Well, 
one of the assets of Pru is it's a networking opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a lot of women realize the power of networking. How do you find it in Pru? Is it a powerful tool? I would imagine so, but some people want to talk about it. How, you know, like you help other people. Any I, success stories of well, networking? Actually, uh, in my job, we work on a lot of very interesting projects where we deal with some new ideas, interesting ways of, of uh, solving problems. And for me, Crew is wonderful because I'll just flip through the directory. It's a small enough organization. I know virtually all the members, and our, their disciplines are laid out. And I'll say, gee, you know, we have this interesting tax issue. I wonder if somebody else has come across it. Or we're looking at doing some other kind of development-related thing. I wonder if somebody else, and sure enough, somebody else in the organization has either done it or knows somebody else who has. And one of the wonderful things about our organization is our cardinal rule is that we must return each other's phone calls. Ah, so I important. have access to some of the most senior executives in the real estate industry who are always happy to share information because I would do the same for them. That's true. My business is a transaction-oriented business. If I'm trying to lease space or, or find a space for a tenant, I need information. I need it quickly. I need to be able to verify information. And I think that by having an associate as part of the group, I'm apt to get information faster than other people because you have a relationship. I'm able to get more information, maybe privileged information, because there is the bond and the trust that's established. So in terms of networking for anybody who's transaction-oriented, it's very, very valuable. How, if anybody wanted to get hold of one of you, how would they get hold of you to find out more about Crew? Is there a phone number? Just, to, just write me? Um, I would suggest that they contact me. Uh, my phone number is 212-282-2006, uh, and I would be happy to speak with anybody who's interested. And we, uh, Crew has monthly meetings in which we feature industry speakers who are the leaders and speak on whatever the hot issue is of the day. Um, our, our upcoming speaker is going to be uh, Danny Meyer, who is the creator of the Union Square Cafe in the Gramercy Park Tavern, which I'm sure he's going to be a great speaker and we'll get a big draw. And our, those monthly breakfasts are open to members and non-members. And it's a wonderful opportunity. Our speakers really enjoy it because they speak and then there's a little bit of give and take and questions. And given the type of people who come, it's always, our speakers always comment afterwards uh, how enjoyable it is. They feel it's both informal, but the questions are really um, well formulated. Well, I think Danny would make, an, as you say, a marvelous speaker because he basically renovated that whole Union Square area. He he, he's really one of the people who's responsible for the uh, renaissance of that neighborhood. Fabulous. Yeah. Talking about renaissance, let's go back and talk about Grand Central Station and the revitalization. How long is that going to be taking? And what is your role in it? Um, I did all the pre-construction on the project. Um, it has about, it should be turned over to the, um, to the stores and to the retail people by the end of this year. Uh, my role was to participate in the early planning, including budgeting and logistics and scheduling. And the logistics on this project were unbelievable because we had to keep the terminal operational and all that early planning really paid off because now what we would do is we would create little snapshots of where everybody would be positioned on day one and then week three or week four you would move something around in order to get to another portion. Um, the revitalization of the terminal is going to be wonderful. I kind of think about uh, train travel at that time in the at 1913 when the station was built was almost comparable. It was a very elegant experience, and it was almost probably comparable to uh, flying the Concorde today with that, the, that type of facilities around. There was a, a, uh, a Turkish bath in the terminal. There was a oh, really? theater. There were so many different things. And what we're doing now is by building the second set of stairs, which were really part of the plan, we're going to open up the balconies to uh, for easier access, and there will be some very nice restaurants up there, and they're in the process of planning that right now. Oh, how exciting. Wow, Come, going back to a grand, I was going to say grand finale. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> what would you consider the most important piece of advice that you have received in your career? 
real estate. Network, network, network. Networking. Right. Absolutely. But with sincerity. Networking doesn't mean picking somebody else's brain. What it really means is a give and take. What it means is doing for other people as well. Um, it, it's not a one-way street. And you have to be as accessible to other people as you would want them to be for you. That's really the true essence of networking. Because nobody wants to feel used, but they all want to feel that they can be relied on and they can rely on you. Because if they can't rely on you, they're not going to answer your phone calls again. That's right. <laughs> Very sad. <exciting. laughs> you know how um, that goes. Did you want to answer that? I, I think I would like to add one thing to that, and that is to, especially to young women coming into the field, to be the very best that you can and um, to have your, have your ability or have, your, have what you do judged on your ability, not on your gender. And that's where the equality comes in, is by ability. And, and I think that is just so important to any person to strive to be the best they possibly can be. Well, talking about gender versus uh, being a woman and being uh, judged on being a woman, would you say things have changed in the past? 20 years, 20, 30 years in that respect? I would say they have. I, I certainly think that there are much larger numbers of women in the industry than there were. When I graduated from law school, um, all, I was part of a, I think there were maybe a third of, the, of my law school class was women. But when I first uh, started practicing, I, was, I started in private practice in a major Wall Street firm. And there were very few women at the more senior ranks. That, of course, has changed dramatically. I think law has been one of the first areas in the industry to, to really open up its ranks and to it, all. It, what I thought was interesting, I was in a major negotiation a few years ago. And on my side of the table, representing the landlord with me as a real estate person, I had a female attorney with me, and I had a female construction project manager. And on the other side, was my counterpart a female real estate person, the same thing, she had a female lawyer with her, she had a female construction person, and there was one token man. <laughs> and it was just so much fun, and we all looked across the table at the major stock exchange company, and we said, isn't this terrific that here we are? And there were six women just really heading the negotiation and getting it done. It was, it was terrific. And probably less time than it would take for all the Absolutely. men to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> it was a very different kind of meeting. Oh, that is it was terrific. Great. Did you all know that you wanted to go into real estate when you started out, or did that just evolve? Well, I ended up going to architecture school. And when I graduated, I worked actually on the design side for a very short period of time and found when I would go out to inspect my projects that I loved the construction part so much that I just they couldn't get my boots off after a while, and I just loved it. <laughs> well, I got to so tell you, it evolved. <laughs> I have to tell you one thing. You're completely different than what I pictured you. <laughs> and I'm sure you get this all the time. Because it's yes. very, uh, <laughs> the audience can't really see you, but you're really petite. And here I was expecting somebody a little bit taller, a little bit, I, I don't know. Rosie the Riveter? Yeah. One of the cute things that did happen with my client, the general uh, for the Women's Memorial, Somebody said the same thing to her. She's a small person. And she said, don't you pay any attention to that. I have a seven-foot mentality. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of shook her finger at us. And we all laughed and said, how wonderful to be able to witness this. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> Wendy, you do a juggling act between your career, your three lovely children, and all your cultural and civic activities. How do you do it? And what advice would you give? sleep deprivation. <laughs> um, I'm extremely organized. I, I, you know, there's a, an old saying, and I, it's a little bit trite, but I think it's unfortunately true, which is that busy people get more things done. I have lots of lists. I just keep doing things. I don't procrastinate. I'm always thinking ahead. Um, as president of crew, I find myself thinking at 3 in the morning, OK, what's next? What should be on the agenda for the next meeting? Um, and you just do it. And frankly, I'm very lucky. I have uh, great help at home. And I have a husband who really does 50% of the parenting. I mean, but the reality is that uh, 
not everything gets done perfectly. But as long as you're comfortable with that. Yes. I, I love what I do. I wouldn't have it any other way. Sounds wonderful. What, in the closing moments of the show, what advice would you like to leave the audience with? Well, I think we all love the industry that we're in. Mm -hmm. And when you think about real estate, don't just think about buying and selling houses or renting space. The world of real estate encompasses so much from design to construction to appraisal to law that if you have any interest in the physical property at all from land up, there's probably room for someone in real estate. And it's worth the time and the effort to try to explore it, to talk to people about it, because it's a very dynamic and exciting field. Especially in these days when we're in the boom situation again. Oh, yeah. Anybody else? Any advice? Just um, if you're enthusiastic about something, I think that goes a very long way in, in enthusiasm and generates the ability to create and to get things done. And, and I, I think it's certainly a great industry for somebody who's creative and somebody like myself who's a little bit of a deal junkie and really likes to work on different <laughs> things. It's really, it's, it's a very high energy um, type of field. Sounds great. I really miss my calling going back into real estate, mm -hmm. or going into real estate once I got my license. I thank you ladies for joining me, and I hope you've learned as much about commercial real estate and real estate in general, and crew. American Menopause Foundation Incorporated cordially invites you to attend their fourth annual Menopause Symposium on September 14, 1998. For more information, contact The Woman's Connection. <laughs>